what's up you guys and for as always welcome back to our episode of who was really better and in this episode i'm gonna get the big chance of actually having finch here helping me out with actually dictating of um, which one of these two pokemons that actually are better tapu bulu of course being introduced first was a really refined Pokemon in very, very much regard, mainly because of its Grassy Surge ability and new ability for that generation in combination with the Grassy Fairy combination. It was a really, really strong threat, still is to this day. And Rillaboom kind of was reinvented the wheel a little bit with being only a Grass type alone, but getting the Grassy Surge too. And uh, for the longest time until the Tabula was revealed, they were very speculative of which one of these two really was better, the prawn, real, real offensive threat that was Bulu, or the more synergizable and more splashable Rillaboom. And uh, what do you know, the dialogue still continued to this day, though it's very much more refined since after the Crown of Fundra DLC was announced. So with that said, always, we're gonna cover, of course, their overall viability in Smogon and Draft League to find out which one of these two that really are better. And we're gonna start off with Tapu Bulu, of course, since it was introduced first. Now, Tapu Bulu is a beast on its own, really. Grass and Fairy combination is actually a quite good defensive typing because basically what that allows you to do is have the same issues with grass as you always have but you get a few extra resistances and weaknesses of course with fairy so we have a resistance in water electric grass fighting ground dark and an immunity in dragon which is quite all right and the weaknesses are actually while well, a few are quite well rounded and easy to predict. So, a weakness to fire, a weakness to ice, definitely a quad weakness to poison, which is definitely problematic, and a weakness to, of course, flying and steel. That said, though, there are a matchup here that Bulu naturally do beat and definitely doesn't have to worry as much of. But one thing I really like about the Grass and Fairy combination zone is that it does give your extra resistances to one of them being in fighting, but in contrast to. Um, the combination that is grass and poison which also is a good defensive typing you don't lose your ground resistance you do keep that though it is an exchange of actually getting that poison weakness which is like i said quad basically you don't want to say against a predicted poison move and it's something that bulu needs to circumvent and work with now bulu is much more than that defensive typing its stat distribution is quite fierce it's theoretically quite defensive um, the thing that stands out is of course HP, it's on the lower side at 70, but it's defensive 115, a special defense at 95, will allow it to be very very dangerous naturally, as it so sits quite right and has moves to kinda allow that to work. Combine that with actually a fair attack stat, um, I mean fair, 130 is large, uh, 130 uninvested it's really dangerous, it's basically it's, it's a 105 attack if you're either fully or not invested, so it's very dangerous naturally and you can invest on that and it becomes very much dangerous. In 85 the special attack it's not bad, it's definitely not the preferred option but just that you can run it, it's something that very few tanks have to use or be able to capitalize on. And 75 in its speed is while on the lower side, for being as chunky as it is, this is a Pokemon that definitely can soak ahead to retaliate on the most matchups, naturally. But the speed here does also allow you to outspeed other tanks, which is always a merit in these types of environment. And it does allow this Pokemon to force out slower Pokemon and hurt them in the circuit when, of course, if they switch out. So Tapu Bulu's move pool is quite diverse, really. Considering the god synthesis from the previous generation, it basically allows this Pokemon to be very, very, very chunky. However, it wasn't necessarily coming to its own until this generation, and it has a lot to do with the extra option of his move pool. Sadly, due to the leaks, we did basically confirm ourselves that we didn't get something like Play Rough, so it's no physical fairy stab, nor did it get a Grassy Glide, which is a priority move in terrain. And while that's unfortunate, it's not decisive for the Pokemon itself. It still has a lot of options outside of that, but it was rather unfortunate that it didn't get them. That said, when we talk about the stabs, we are having something that is very, very key for this mod, and that is Horn Leech. Being able to recover with stab-based damage that are boosting terrain is something that's just phenomenal. It's such a good tool. If you don't want to use something like Woodhammer that, of course, gives you recall damage, which is... While unfortunate, it doesn't necessarily matter when you recover so much as you do, but 
it is a very strong option. Another thing that really stands out in the real or in the Tapu Bulu's case is actually that it gets a lead seed. Lead seed, terrain, and lift doors is a combination that wins the timer. If you want to use that, but it's defensive enough to solve the role. And as we said before, its HP was a bit on the lower side. And when you have something like lead seed, that is in theory not necessarily an issue because it means that you can capitalize on your defenses a lot more to be able to stomach hits better and recover a lot more HP in contrast to what you have invested on. So it does allow it to be quite capable. Um, another or a few good defensive moves it gets that is really good is Nature's Madness, which basically is like super fang, but uh, a bit more reliable, hits everything. <laughs> and that's, yeah, that's absolutely better. Also, mean look to lock in a matchup and disable. And I don't think we talk too much about disable when it comes to Tapu Bulu, but it does get it, and it's actually quite right. Combine disable with taunt, and you have a very nasty matchup to deal with. And, um, I don't think we see that enough. We also have a force switch in Whirlwind, which is phenomenal for a mod such as this. Uh, a few extra notes, its offensive move pool does allow it to be very scary. It has high horsepower, for example, which in this generation or previous also meant that there's a ground-based physical move that isn't reduced by the terrain damage. It didn't get something like Earthquake before, so having the access to actually hurt steel types without running something like superpower is great. Another thing it does have is actually close combat, so you can run that instead. <laughs> it also has Stone Edge for the flying matchups, they could punish it. We have Sin Headbutt and Darkest Lariat. Um, I think it gets Mega Horn too, which is great. And because of the setup move, we have Mega Horn, I was gonna say, but no, I mean Soul Stance and Bulk Up. Two very good setup moves. You also have Iron Defense, I want to capitalize on that, and Call Mind. Call Mind might actually be very forgettable, but it did get the Dazzling Gleam. So it has Gearing, Dazzling Gleam, or Energy Ball, and it can run these moves with some reliance, though, like I said, it's probably more for something like a league environment. But um, overall, like Type of Bulu's move pool is very diverse for what it is and it hurts and it's very tough to deal with it's defensive enough to stomach a lot of hits and it hurts well enough to be able to be very hard for it to kind of leave it with it it's very hard to win matchup one versus one unless you can really hurt it with super effective moves because bulu stomach and retaliates very well and is one of the best grass types in this game for all the right reasons it is Fat, it is extremely tanky and it's extremely dangerous when it hits you back. So, Tapu Bulu, top tier Pokemon this generation, too. It is whether or not how it compares to the Rillaboom. Now, when Rillaboom was kind of in this game from the beginning, it didn't have access to the grass as such. It was a certain ability, it did actually took half a year before we really could speculate how viable Rillaboom really could be. And it was quite interesting because Rillaboom was falling through the tiers, wasn't looked like I gave him a second look even in the draft format because what it could do was something that others could do better. And that's not something you want to have. A soul grass type, while good, it has a lot of issues. You have still the resistances here in water, electric grass and ground, but your weaknesses are quite rough with fairy, ice, poison, flying and bug. So yeah, you turns your way and that's a problem. So defensively, while grass typing is considered a good defensive typing, there are matchup here that are kind of sweaty and kind of tough to deal with head on. But the stat distribution of Rillaboom is quite fair, and I actually like them myself because it's very, very defined and refined, if you want to say that. Base HP of was 100, combined it with a defenses of 90 defense and 70 in its special defense. Well, it isn't as I was gonna say physical or or as bulky as a Bulu can be, it still is respectable bulk involved here. It's definitely above your average grass type. Combine that with an attack set of 1 in 25, it is basically as strong as type of Bulu, no doubt. Special attack at 60, yeah. You're, you're not gonna see this guy running boomers anytime soon. While it does get it, it's probably the worst with it. And 85 in its speed, which is speedier than Bulu. It is definitely speedier than Bulu and should be <laughs> kept in mind. Now once this guy got grass as such, it was it was its only ability. But it wasn't until one month later when Isle of Armor was introduced that Rillaboom really spiked where grass is such sure it made it better, but Isle of Armor gave it grassy light. Now I don't need to tell you too much about Grassy Light, all I can say is that it might as well has been Rillaboom's synergy move because 
you use Rillaboom because of Grassy Line. Grassy Line is giving you in terrain, in grassy terrain, a priority with that move, and it's a 70 base power, combine it with stab and then boost in the terrain of 30%, you got a very nasty priority on your hand. And basically, Rillaboom is grassy line. It was made for it, and Bulo didn't get it, and it's a tiebreaker at some time because it basically means that this is one of the few edges Rillaboom has over Tapu Bulu because. Tapu Bulu could also lead stall, and while the Rillaboom can do it too, it has actually lead seal and taunt, it is not as key as it will ever do in that. However, it has a few other moves over it, and it's knockoff and U-turn. Knockoff is great for the matchup you can't beat, and when I, of course, disrupt them, would not capitalize on their item. And something I definitely see is a small edge, and U-turn for the same reason, being able to pipe it out, and get a better matchup. So if you can't grassy glide freely, why not U-turn and try to get yourself into a different position? So it's always worth having in mind that these are two moves that kind of stands out with it. Uh, a few extra moves that I think is interesting is to get Stream Punch, and um, we also have Bulldoze and Acrobatics. And Acrobatics is great with grassy C. Basically, you can run a more offensive. Rillaboom with something like Soul Sands and actually have just Acrobatics, High Horsepower and Grassy Glide or Woodhammer and it became a one-man army and <laughs> it's actually phenomenal and uh, it's basically it. like it gets also bulk up which is quite nice for it its movable isn't as diverse, I really want to enforce that, that unfortunately it isn't as broad but the moves that matters it's kind of getting it also gets Darkest Larrys, it also gets High Horsepower and the traditional Rillaboom is really just Miracle Seed with Grassy Glide, U-Turn, Knockoff or High Horsepower together with something like Woodhammer and it works great for it. And it has a different supportive um, moves, like I said, it gets actually torn to get Sleet Seed, it even gets Fake Out in Nature Power, but the reason for using them are kinda tough to argue when you're only using it for its offensive capable merits. It can pipe it out of a situation, so while why try being more uh, defensive and try to match up against them, which can just pipe it out to something that solves it a lot better. And um, basically, you want to use this for its offensive prowess, and it's got that in it plenty. And while a Rillaboom might not be the most complex Pokemon to talk about, it is, as I said, the Grassy Glide. It is all this Pokemon is. It is a very, very offensively capable Pokemon that breaks the norm of what a grass type offensively can be, and it also is able to pivot around those options when the matchup we can't beat. It has defensive merits, but there's really no reason to use them. So with that said, I want to leave Finch for the wrap up and why one over the other Pokemon is better than the other. Hey guys, it's Finch here. So we're going to be discussing Rillaboom and Tapu Bulu in the SSOU metagame as well as other formats and the big thing is that Rillaboom gained access to some moves that Tapu Bulu simply doesn't have. Grassy Glide is obviously the big one, the elephant in the room if you will, giving it priority so that despite the two having pretty mediocre speed, it's able to revenge kill Pokemon. For example, let's say you have a Garchomp and it's taking you know 30-40% damage. Tapu Bulu wouldn't be able to stop a plus 2 Garchomp from clicking a, you know, a Life Orb Stone Edge or potentially even a Poison Jab and killing it. However, Rillaboom would, with Grassy Glide being able to take it out. And the same goes for other Pokemon as well, like you know, Revenge Kill, a lot of fast Pokemon, and that's important. Another thing is Knockoff. Whereas Pokemon like Skarmory and Corviknight are not able to really um, be threatened by R Tapu Bulu over the course of the game, Rillaboom can knock them off, making it so that their helmet is no longer in place, or the leftovers are no longer there. And in the long term, that goes such such a long way towards really eroding away at them, making progress, etc. And a lot of the time, you can kind of build your game plan around, oh, I'm going to use Rillaboom to knock this Pokemon off, and then this Pokemon after that is going to be able to take it out once it's weakened or losing its item. And that type of synergy is something that Tapu Bulu doesn't really have going for it, whereas Rillaboom teams can oftentimes game plan around that. I will say that in draft formats, and I'm going to briefly touch on this, Tapu Bulu has a lot more appeal because A, having a fairy type on teams gives you resistance to dark type, immunity to dragon type, and that could be planned around a ton. In OU, that's less the case, especially with things like Ash Gren Greninja no longer being in the game this generation, unlike last generation where it was. Why? Because a lot of the Dragon types have the ability to break through fairy types like Tapu Bulu and are only well by more durable fairy types like Clefable and Magirna, for example. 
Moreover, we're more looking at the offensive presence of the two grass types relative to each other, and it's clear that Rillaboom is the superior offensive Pokemon. Despite having a bit less attack, it just has more going for it. It has Grassy Glide, and addition to that, U-Turn. U-Turn lets it function as a pivot, a Pokemon that can kind of hit and run. So you have your, your Rillaboom in against, say, a water type, a Slowbro, and you force it out because it doesn't want to die to a Woodhammer, of course. You can click U-Turn as they go to their Tangrowth, their Corviknight, their Heatran, Pokemon that might wall you, and get out of the way. Whereas with Tapu Bulu, you're either forced to double switch or you're forced to predict around it, and that makes it a lot harder. That makes it less easy to work around. So, moreover, in OU, the offensive presence and prevalence of Rillaboom is largely due to the fact that it has some moves that, unfortunately, Tapu Bulu does not have access to. Now, what does Tapu Bulu have over Rillaboom? Unfortunately, not much. One thing is the fairy typing, of course, and also perhaps slightly better attack, which means it's going to hit naturally harder. But all in all, while those things do give it a slight niche, perhaps a little bit of viability, it's not enough to justify due to the offensive nature of these grass types relative to the more defensive grass types such as Tangrowth and Amoongus, which unfortunately take up a large amount of the defensive kind of realm of grass viability, if you will. So, in draft, in my opinion, you can get away with using Bulu a bit more, although Rillaboom still arguably outclasses it more offensively. But in standard OU play, I definitely would say Rillaboom is better right now. And I still think that both of them have, you know, their own story behind them, their own um, their own kind of arc of viability here. And they could do different things, but offensively speaking is where both of them have their place in OU, and Rillaboom's clearly better. It is worth noting, of course, that Tapu Bulu is a great Pokemon in UU, and I definitely would advise trying it out there. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for having me on. I hope this is sufficient. And um, yeah, peace out, guys. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Thank you so much, Finch. You've definitely gone into what I would say the meat of this discussion. It is easy to see why Rillaboom is just standing out just a little bit better than Bulu. I think personally that Bulu is just as good as it was before, but Rillaboom redefined what an offensive grass type really can be. And we can redefine it and are successful with it. It's kind of hard for an old Pokemon that almost does the same thing to try to solve a role that the other one is doing largely better. What much so with, of course, the Grassy Glide. It's redefining Rillaboom. It's really as simple as that. And Rillaboom is so diverse and so... I was gonna say glue aspect of Rillaboom is so large. It's basically doing what Coco was doing in the previous generation. It was able to set up the rain and get out of it with a pivot to be able to other mods to really be more successful with the terrain boost in mind. And consider a grassy terrain is a much, much more defensive glue to a lot of matchups with of course reducing ground-based damage and whatnot for other mods. It really speaks the volume to the contrast of how to set teams together. Rillaboom is just very very good a very strong individual pokemon that works very much easily with other mods naturally so rillaboom absolutely win this matchup there is no contest and with that said i really hope you guys enjoy this episode and if you want to see more from this do tell me if i want to you know really really revive this series again because i do feel passionate about it it just it takes some time to record and i really like to do this video i really mean that so that's it guys as always thank you for watching make sure to check out finn's channel like i said he's phenomenal and i respect that guy to the earth and beyond or moon and back i don't know <laughs> anyway guys as always thanks for watching don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video until then as always guys take care bye